This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by State Farm, who has surprisingly great rates for your auto insurance. In 1999, my mom recorded me in our family room, delivering the lines for what I thought was a horror movie. My mom read the other roles, and I thought she gave a much better performance than I did. There was even a moment when I seriously considered not sending the tape because that would require a trip to the post office and an entire day's salary for postage. Not that I had a paying job. I was surprised when I received a phone call asking if I could audition in person. Then I realized that the casting director must have mixed up my tape with someone else's. I could have pointed out the error, but I'd never been to LA and wanted to go. So my parents gave me airline miles and I flew to Los Angeles, Burbank actually, where I auditioned every day for a week and slept on three different couches. At the week's end, my friend with the least comfortable couch offered to drive me to the airport. And because at the time it was hard to find good Mexican food in Washington state, I wanted one last burrito. My pager began buzzing just as our nachos arrived. There was a payphone in the back of the restaurant, and when I returned the page, I was told that I got the role. It was one of the biggest surprises of my life. I was also surprised to learn that Scary Movie was actually a comedy. This was after my audition. Speaking of nice surprises, State Farm provides coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Unqualified would like to thank our presenting sponsor, State Farm. Unlike your friends, State Farm agents love talking about home and auto insurance. But like your best friends, State Farm agents are always there for you, ready to help through the ups, downs, and everything in between. Check out statefarm.com to find an agent in your neighborhood. State Farm, talk to an agent today. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Unqualified with your host, Anna Ferris. What's your ratio of friends that you have from like back in the day to friends yeah. that you have now? I think it's actually a lot. I still like keep in touch with so many people from college, from high school, my first job. It's weird, actually. And then new friends now are a little bit lesser because I'm so busy. And then I think everybody wants a free dress. (laughs) I still invite like my high school friends to like my shows at Fashion Week every season still. Even if they don't come, I still like to invite them actually. It feels like comforting in some way. Do you know the self-absorbed part of me, which is (laughs) most of me, immediately went to, I would like to be invited. You're coming. You're going to look amazing. It's I, I did fun. attempt to wear this vintage yes. Gucci sweater it for you. Really I would Because I actually thought like <laughs> a little bit harder. Like normally I'm wearing yep. like a super crunchy t-shirt. You're still in your And your I was like, well, Uggs. Christian's coming today. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Still nugs. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're just getting to know each other <laughs> next time. You did good. <laughs> you look chic. <laughs> it's well, Saturday. And you're generous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, how do you feel about reading your own bio. Wait, really? Okay. This is exciting. Go ahead. Okay. Ooh, Christian Vincent Seriano was born and raised in Annapolis, Maryland. He is an American fashion designer and a member of the Council Fashion Designers of America. Seriano first gained attention after winning the fourth season of the design competition Project Runway, becoming the series' youngest winner. That was a baby. And since launched his Christian Seriano collection starting in 2008 and is now a mentor on season 18 of Project Runway. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, here are my questions for you. Okay. Do you believe in the idea of a muse? I do. I definitely believe in a muse. I really, really do. People are very inspiring, and I think they continue to be inspiring. So I think that's what I think of as a muse. Who was an early muse for you? Ooh, um, I mean, in a funny way, my sister was like very, very inspiring growing up. I love that. Yeah, she really, really was. She would wear these really eccentric outfits every day to like... Like what? Like platform shoes with you know bell-bottom flared fringe pants and like a faux fur jacket and she worked in this couture hat store and I mean she's 15 years old living in Annapolis Maryland like who works in a couture hat store like it didn't make sense and we like went to like I don't know like a normal high school and she would wear these crazy outfits every day and I was like don't people make fun of you and she's like every day they make fun of me I look 
strange. She goes, but I feel really fabulous in them. Like she would wear like a tutu to school. And I'm like, who are you? Anyway, I think it just like really inspired this idea of like transformation. I really loved that she was one thing and then turned into another. And then the next day was something else. And that must have been really courageous for her. Yeah. You're getting sort of mocked or doing anything daring at that age is just terrifying. Yeah, this is like in the 90s and she's like young and spirited and luckily there was no social media. That's helpful. Uh, Because now being a teenager is not fun. But I think at first she was like, oh, but I know that people will like actually be a little bit inspired by how I dress. That's fucking awesome. Are you close with her? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's walked in one of my shows before. We we do a lot together. Yeah. She's great. So when did you start to have a distinct sense of style? I mean, I definitely was more interested in fantasy because I was like with my sister and she was backstage doing like, she was a ballet dancer. So I was in costumes and hair and makeup and... Oh, I knew what like a bobby pin was before I knew what anything was. I was like in this fantasy world. So I think I always knew that that's what I wanted to be in in some way. And then I think when I started making my first pieces, they were definitely more, I don't know, from a dream place. They weren't like everyday clothes. Don't you think that, or maybe I just do, I don't know. Maybe I'm just in my diary. But the (laughs) idea of like during that time, like high school, And into college to some degree, but wanting the world to be bigger. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to ask you about musicals, because I know that you designed costumes for musicals, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, all kinds of things. So what's your favorite musical? And do you even like them? That's what's funny. I don't think I love musicals that much, actually. Um, (laughs) But I think because it was like, oh, that was the thing you did if you were a designer, like a young kid, like, what did you make clothes for? You would make costumes. So... I think you were stuck in that world because fashion was very unobtainable. But that goes back to saying, like, I wanted to be otherworldly. It wasn't enough what I was doing, and I knew there was other things out there in the world to do. Like yeah. what? Tell me. I think, like, when you're, like, a young kid in a, a small place like Annapolis, Maryland, you're like, oh, you know, cliche dreaming of bigger things. But I actually physically was like, no, there isn't anything here I know there's something else to do so I think that's kind of why I was like creating my own narrative in a way you switched high schools yeah your freshman year Mm -hmm. correct yes that must have been really difficult or was it a relief no it was a relief it was awesome because I was like a little like gay boy living in a very sports driven Annapolis is like Naval Academy. It's very buttoned up. So it was nice to go to high school in Baltimore City. It was an art school and everybody else was just as eccentric as I was. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I drove an hour commute to and from, so two hours a day to go to high school at 16 years old. That's pretty crazy. That's amazing. Yeah, but I had to. Okay, can I ask you some darker questions? Okay. Okay, who was your teenage crush? My sister had her like best friend. I was in love with him. I can't remember his name. Ray, 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 maybe. Uh, oh, oh, oh! But I did like uh, no. But there's another what? one. There's okay. another one. All his right, name right. is Jordan, and I do okay. remember his name. And Jordan. My then really, now we're talking. Yes, my now sister's we're really good friend Jordan was yep. so hot, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, should I ask him? Like, and I was young, and I was like, oh, why do I like him? I'm like, should I ask him? Is it weird that I think he's cute? And then I didn't do that. Luckily, which is good because he probably would hurt me, but. Anyway. So you were going to ask him if he... Well, I didn't understand why I liked him. Like, I'm like, oh, oh, why am I this little boy liking my sister's friend? Right. But, you know, he was like a brother, and I was like, oh, why do I like this boy? Anyway. So what were you... Well, I <laughs> yeah. st- I'm still confused of what you would have asked him. This is like a tragic story. I know. I would have like, asked him... What, what if was Jordan a- is out there, and he's like Honestly, waiting for you? He might be. I know. I bet he is. I think he has a wife I'm- and a lot of children oh. now, but that's okay. I don't know. I didn't have a lot of crushes. Really? <gasps> you? Oh my God. You wait, were, I know it. Okay, okay. Big crush. Bo Davis. That's his name. He would spend the night. I loved him. And I think he knew. I think it got weird once we got older. I definitely tried to cuddle with him a couple times too. So he would spend the night in my childhood home. We would hang out. Fun. We moved. Yeah. His mother bought our house and he now lives in it. And I think they still live there. My childhood home. Are there like the, you know, like the little height charts on the wall? A hundred percent. That's everywhere. So isn't that weird? He's, they still live there too. Did you have posters on your wall? I had boy band posters. That's all I had. Like what? Sync, Backstreet Boys, Britney posters. Yeah, that's what I had. But who was your favorite? I was a big Britney lover 
for sure. My sister definitely inspired me, though. She was into, like, I mean, I was into No Doubt because she was. I was sure. into, like, Alanis because she, like, I was into things because she was. My sister really, like, everything she did, I was, like, obsessed with, as you would. She's four years older, so it just it was what it was. Can we talk about fashion? Yeah. Like, how do you get your inspiration for creating something around somebody's body? I mean, it's everything. It's the person is definitely helpful. Helpful. I, it sounds, yeah. the way you just looked at me, they were like, they're not helpful, <laughs> no. actually. No, the no. celebrity is Help. not helpful at all. <laughs> no, help, <laughs> helpful for me to um, be inspired a little bit about them and what they like and what they're into. That is helpful. But I definitely think it's imagination. I really like to, like, create these random little dream scenarios that might not be real and and I think inspiration is the same way. Like a plant or a pillow or a texture could be inspiring, but it's what I think about that afterward. I'm like, oh, but I don't know, that plant inspires dresses or bodices or whatever it is. Will you tell me two, I don't know, gowns that you really liked? That I really liked? Yeah. Oh God, so many. I remember like, I mean, that this isn't even that long ago, but like when Hillary Swank won her Oscars, oh, I loved that Isn't gown. That it was amazing. I still think about it. What Gwyneth would wear sometimes. I'm a big fan and who is a friend of mine is Juliette Lewis. And I actually think that her Oscars look when she wore her braids and her gloves was one of my favorite looks ever. And to now dress her all the time is like really funny and surreal. But I think about that and I'm like, oh, but remember when you wore this, let's do something like this. So I do think about that still. Do you have favorite colors? Mm, Not necessarily, but color. I love color. I will say I love experimenting with color. I'm not afraid of anything in that world. The color wheel is open. It's endless. Yes. I like pink a lot though, I will say. (laughs) I really like a very specific shade of yellow. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know that Alexander McQueen is like one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. I think McQueen definitely was a little more disturbed with how he thought people should look. Um, I think it was a little darker. I come from a little bit of a happier place. I like to make people like feel good in something. Yeah. I think you can feel it too. I don't know. It it is an emotional thing when you're in a room, even with a random person, it can be a, you know, a mom doing a mother the bride dress or whatever but you can feel her actual like emotions change when she feels good and I think that's something that you can't buy and it's something that you can't create it's just an impossible feeling and the craziest thing is too exactly to what you're speaking about is that you're essentially playing a different character yeah it's a heightened version of yourself you are you feel uncomfortable but also sexy it is a costume essentially but I think that's also why I have a lot of actress or musician friends because when I do work with them I actually do think about like what's happening in their life and what they're feeling and what they're going to wear and what they're going to do so I get a little more into it than just sending a dress because that's not always as exciting for me I do like to talk about it a little bit I've never had that before call me whatever you need I do it all the time and I do it also sometimes it's just because it's fun like being a designer every day you make clothes you're like okay it's the same old crap so it gets old so sometimes when you're making something totally new that's actually just more stimulating i'm sure that's for you when you're taking a job and you do the same scenes over and over and over again and then when you're like oh it's a totally different type of film or whatever you take that job more because you're it's more exciting to you completely yeah you're 100 right yeah all right now can we get into relationship shit okay are you single No. Okay. Do you find dating in the fashion world difficult? Dating or or being anyone even in somewhat of a public thing is hard to date for sure, which I think we all have. Are you with somebody who's in the public eye as well? No, no. But I think it is hard for him sometimes. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Which it is. It's weird. First heartbreak. Oh my gosh. Oh, so sad. I dated this boy in high school and love. Oh my God. I was obsessed with him. And he was a dancer and we like lived together one summer while we did, we moved to New York and like did summer programs and he was so talented and he like went to Juilliard and oh, I was obsessed with him. And then he just, I was finishing my senior year in high school. He was a year above me, went to Juilliard, moved to New York and just ghosted me. I've never heard from him since. What? No. Isn't that wild? It's wild. Literally. You guys lived together. We lived together at one point. We That is fucking crazy. It was wild. Yeah. It's not crazy. I think it was I was going to visit him, called and called and called, never answered, never heard from him ever again. Not crazy. I think yes. I might have heard from him right when I like won the show or something. 
maybe a mm. message on Facebook or something. But other than that, no, never. I never talked to him. Is that wild? Yes. So and mean. Have you been? Have you been uh, like curious to like look? I don't know. I don't oh, know I of- definitely stalked like social for a while, but. I don't think he had social media, or at least I never found it. Honestly, he know. could be anywhere now. I mean, this is so long ago. Mm-hmm. Lots of heartbreak stories. I think... Come on, give yeah, us a good one. I know. Well, I mean, I was with somebody for a really long time, and I think when that kind of ended, it definitely was heartbreaking because, you know, you lose your person and you lo- you lose, like, what you think is family. So that ended, and that was really hard. Don't you think it's also the idea of, like, what you had imagined for your life? Yeah. Dividing I was really me. young, and we were together for a really long time, from young to not that long ago. And I think, you know, yes, I still want to be the same person, but you do mature and change, and you figure out different things that you want in your life, and very normal things, I think. But, I mean, we were together for 10 years, 11 years, so... And I was 21 years old. You're a mature monogamist. Yeah. I like being with the person because I think it takes a long time to really get to know somebody, like really know them. How did you meet the fellow you're with now? Oh, yeah. We met through friends, like a friend of a friend. It's really nice. That is so uninteresting. It really is. (laughs) Oh, I did want to do an improv with you. Uh, but I don't know if you want to do it. I don't know. Okay. I was going to try to be like your new intern, like uh, mm. like interviewing <laughs> okay. for your, with your company. <laughs> okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, Christian, thank you so much for seeing me. This is like literally a dream come true. Mm. It's so awesome. I'm glad. I've been studying fashion for a long time. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So here's my resume. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, wow. What I like to think of... <laughs> As like my aesthetic is sort of like a blank page. So I just want like every single thing to like be a singular inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I admire you so much. Who's your favorite designers? Oh, my favorite designers? Well, okay. This is going to sound crazy. Okay. But I'm going to go with like Sesame Street because I really love... Now, hear me out. Hear me out. I know it sounds weird, but I really love, like, the idea of puppetry. I really do, because I think that, Mm. like, we all need to hide in Mm. some way. We search for a cave, Mm -hmm. you know, in some way. Yeah. And so I think about, like, the Dark Crystal. I think about, like, Sesame Street, and I think about, like, like, how we as humans try to escape from ourselves. Mm. Very emotional designer. Yeah. Mm. Can you sew? Can I sell? Sew? I have sewed a couple of things, but interesting. Yeah, yeah, mm. but but I also don't think that's the future. Oh, that's not the future. We're not sewing together arms or I sleeves, don't think so. or, mm. or like feet onto legs or whatever. <laughs> Pants, legs. You can sew, right? Do you think this interview is going great? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so right. much, Christian. You are my favorite designer by far that's ever ever lived you want to know truthfully i don't i don't do my intern interviews so that might be the reason why i didn't do great on that one i would love to spend a day interviewing your potential interns honestly they i would love that can we do that you 100 percent. like you don't even know him i know him you don't know him like what's your vision like just (laughs) sum it up three words that's all you got that's true. I hope the girls ask these questions now that I'm thinking about it. The girls? Like my girls who do actually interview the Yeah, interns. I'm your girl. Yeah, yeah. I thought we established that like 30 seconds ago. Yes, you are. Gosh, Christian. <laughs> this episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Best Fiends. We all know there really is only one match three style game worth playing. It's the one with an actual storyline, cool collectible characters, and non-stop action-packed adventure. It's the one with literally thousands of challenging puzzles to solve. And yes, I'm using the word literally correctly. Of course, I'm talking about best fiends. You meet your best fiends early in their careers. They don't have much experience, but they have heart. I recognized a little piece of myself in each of them. And so I began to assemble the perfect team. I watched them grow as we solved puzzle after puzzle, working hard and playing hard. Today, my best fiends are ready to go anytime and anywhere. I'm really proud of what they have become. With new challenges and levels added all the time, there's never a boring moment. So download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by The Pill Club, 
Do you need to renew your birth control prescription? Want to switch your birth control? Maybe try it for the first time. Whether you know the brand you want or you're looking for help finding the best option, the Pill Club medical team has your back. With the Pill Club, you'll never have to make a trip to the doctor or wait in line at the pharmacy. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered straight to your door for free in discreet packaging. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA-approved brands. Most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $7 per month without insurance. Right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash unqualified, the Pill Club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every unqualified listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash unqualified to get your first birth control care package. That's thepillclub.com slash unqualified to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, thepillclub.com slash unqualified. You must use the link to make a donation. She was so cute. I'm really good at advice. I really am. Okay. So this is going to be a hit. Great. For you. Great. (laughs) I believe that. (laughs) I really am. Okay, let's call. Okay. Hello? Jamin. Hi. Hi, this is Anna. I'm here with Christian Siriano. Hello. Oh my gosh. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for, for doing this with us. Will you tell us what's going on? So I'm 23 and I'm gay and I grew up in a really small area in Northern California. My hometown is like a thousand people. So there was like no other gay people around me really. So I've never had a boyfriend ever in my life. Not a virgin, but never had a boyfriend. And now I'm living in Eugene, Oregon, and I'm going to school. And I figured when I got here that like it would just kind of happen naturally, you know, because there's other like gay people around. And it's been almost a year. I still am just kind of carrying with me that like feeling of the invisibility, I guess. And I'm not quite sure how to, like, put myself out there in a way that's, like, cohesive with, like, what I want. You know, before my past experiences sexually have been, like, partying, whatever, you're drunk and yada yada. And then it's like, oh, God, can't believe I did that. Ha ha. You know, I don't really want that at this point in my life. I'm looking for more, like, something real. So you want a long-term relationship. You want intimacy. Yeah, I want intimacy. Like, I feel like there's a whole side of me that I've never met, you know, that part of me that's in a relationship. And it's just, I feel like, you know, I haven't haven't gone through that heartbreak. And like, you know, like you say often on the podcast, like that, that heartbreak is like something that's so important for everyone to experience, you know, to really know yourself. And I feel like I'm kind of missing that side of myself. I want to sort of qualify that idea with, I think that when you are going through a heartbreak, you have to tell yourself those things. Right. I like to think that because I have to believe it. (laughs) Yeah. So have you made attempts to date? I made a Tinder account, which I was not really excited about. (laughs) It's just not like my favorite thing in the world, but it's been so underwhelming. I'm just like, no, 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 no. You know, it's just a bunch of no's all the time. And I haven't found anyone that seems exciting or like what I'm looking for you know so maybe it's just that my standards are like ridiculously high but is that like a good thing well why did you move to Eugene my aunt recently got a divorce and I was still living in my tiny little town and I'm just craving something bigger and better and she was open to me moving in with her and so I can have an easier way of like getting out of my hometown and kind of into the real world, you know, and also be there for her while she's going through her divorce. It's been a really positive thing for both of us. Are you guys still really close, you and your aunt? Oh, yeah. We're like best friends. (laughs) That's awesome. When you're on those apps, are you swiping or are you actually talking with people? It's a lot of swiping. No, I mean, I've matched with, you know, a bunch of people. And then you're swiping. No. 
Yeah, I'm swiping a lot of mm. no's. Well, but there, um, there, there's our <laughs> issue right there. Maybe you're scared. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I've, I've just never done it before. I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, my God. I think what you should do is I think tonight, it's Saturday night, I think you should swipe yes on every single person on there. And just to see who, no, come on, just to see who responds. You like, you never know who might strike up an interesting conversation. Right. Like, I think you have to like, go for it. Even just one night, even if this this doesn't have to work every time, but just take one night and like, oh God, that'd be so fun. I'm going to take your phone and I will swipe on every single person. (laughs) I think that's great advice. And we talk a lot about the idea of loneliness and how we take a risk and attempt to reach out and make a connection, whether it's a lover or a friend or a relative or whatever. But I think that because we're all so like, attached to our phones or whatever, the idea of human communication, like a one-on-one thing, it is terrifying. It's, ter- it's always been terrifying. Right. But it's like extra terrifying nowadays. Completely. How do we be honest with each other? How do we have the fulfillment of connection when the preface is always like, oh, yeah, I like to hike. I do too. Right. <laughs> Not that it's false. It just feels like, well, is this enough? But I think that if you felt like being courageous. Yeah, I think that's yes. the person I want to be. You know, I want to be that like fearless person that goes after what they want, like relentlessly. Yes. It's just, it's hard, you know, it's, I guess it's just like. It's so fucking hard. Yeah. It's so scary. Yeah. <laughs> but men like confidence, though. Yeah, that's. True. I'm sure you want that in your partner too. Like you want right. them to be confident, so they want the same thing. Like right. men like confident men. What's the difference between arrogance and confidence? Well, arrogance can be fine sometimes too, but like it just depends on the balance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at an arrogant man every now and then, but like I think you know you have to have the balance. But would you want to marry love. an arrogant? Man? I, I think it's a de- simplistic way to put it. You'd be surprised. Even the most arrogant man has like vulnerability. So I think. Right. But you have to just go for it and figure that out. I mean, you're going to be so surprised if you really, even if you go to gay bars, even my friends, like the ones that are the most aggressive and aggressive, meaning like going r- up to talk to somebody. Those are the ones that are like actually going on dates. The ones that right. are kind of like dancing with their friends all night, just them, never meet anybody. Right. It's an interesting thing. Like, I think you just have to, like, go for it. Did you ever have that moment where you were challenged to, like, jump off of the high dive? Yeah, I feel like I've had moments like that. I feel like sometimes I can really go for it, and other times I'm, like, really, it's so hard for me. And this is one of those things where it's just, seems to be so hard for me to actually just jump for this for some reason. But I think it's going to be the most positive thing. I remember standing on the edge of the high dive, (laughs) but that feeling of like, okay, I need to do this to prove something to myself. Right. That I can do something that challenges me. So I think just like Christian said, I would start swiping right? Every single person. Just for fun. Right, because why not? Why not have life experience? Right. There'll be pain, but there'll be happiness. And it's like the idea of sort of studying abroad. It's like, all right, let's gamble a little bit. Right. In testing one's own self, especially at your age, that means you'll head into your 30s having accomplished some of the shit that scares you. Right. And that's great. Yeah. When I was in college, I was like, I'm going to do one thing a day that scares me. Right. And it was usually like giving a stranger a compliment or I would march around ugh, the campus. But, but I am proud of the idea of like, okay, I want to take a fear and I want to conquer it. So how do I do that? Right. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I want to take some of that. I want to take the fear and use it as like motivation, you know? Yeah. I just got to flip it. You are going to be rejected. You'll be hurt. Right. But you know how a grain of sand and an oyster Mm -hmm. eventually becomes a pearl? Like you will be able to start to understand exactly what you want, how to protect yourself, and how to make yourself the best person that you want to be for the love of your life. Right. I think taking risks, especially where you're at right now, is a great idea. I think get out there, get hurt. Be in love. Right. Life experience is so important at your age. And say yes. Just like Christian said, say yes. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on Tinder and I'm going to swipe yes for all 
Every single person. Good. Well, and also maybe if it a date leads to something that's incredible, but if it leads to an, a friendship with a new circle of friends, yeah, that is friends. awesome. Yeah. You need a group of gay boys to hang out with. I was just going to say I've never even had a gay friend. <laughs> oh. That's really what you yeah. need more than anything. Get that first. Yeah. So start saying okay. yes. Have some loving or some friendships. It's also a great story for your first date. Of for who sure. told you to date them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> okay. Will you please keep in touch? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Bye. That is like the story of our lives. Hard. Right? Hard. It's really never had a date or a friend. That's hard. That's really hard. Oh. Having a gay friend, I think that's more important than anything. He needs somebody to talk about things with. Oh, completely. Yeah. I and mean, we don't we all? Yeah, we do. My 20s are hard. The gay dating culture is tough already because, because very, why? it's pretentious. You're looking at like, is he hot or is he like... So it's like straight dating culture <sighs> with men. Yes. But a lot of beautiful women date some like very unattractive men, but gay men only want beautiful gay men. It's really interesting. It's really sad. As we talk about stereotypes here... Do you think that women date unattractive men because of, like, their money or... No, because I think there's a lot of men out there that can be, like, funny or entertaining or... I don't know why. It's just different. At least what I've noticed is, like, even my group of friends or their friends of friends, they're like, oh, well, I'm only really interested in if he has a hot body. And I'm like, but what if he can't count? It really is a thing. It's very strange. Do you think that men are fundamentally more vain than women? Oh, gay men are so vain. For sure. Way more than women. Women can be so, like, easygoing and casual and whatever. I don't know if that's accurate. No? Well, I don't know. I don't know. In my office, I have all women, and we work in fashion. But my girls, for some reason, are not as vain as some of the men, that, even customers that we have. It's really weird. I don't know why. Maybe it's my group of girls. I think some of the most vain people I've worked with by far are men. Yeah, I know. It's really funny. Yeah, but but that's actors. Like, that's I, true. Yep. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Intuit. Powering products like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, and Credit Karma. Intuit works for what you work for, and it was only recently that I found out they were working for me. I've been using QuickBooks for years and more recently began using Mint, which is an easy way to create monthly budgets. It was a bit surprising to realize how much I could save by learning how to make coffee. With Intuit, artificial intelligence can predict your future cash flow recognize a misplaced digit in an account or routing number, and even connect users with live experts who can assist with navigating life changes or help with unique tax situations. Everything is automatically organized as you track your personal or business expenses by scanning receipts, invoices, and other financial documents, while smart budgeting tools let you know before you overspend. Innovative features like these make managing your finances simple, but as you probably already knew, innovation is at the core of everything Intuit does. Discover how Intuit's products can help you see what's possible at Intuit.com. That's I-N-T-U-I-T dot com. This episode is brought to you in part by Plant Botanical. As everyone slowly comes out of hiding, many of you are asking the same questions. Am I ready for actual human contact? Should I swipe right? Will they look like their picture? Do I look like my picture? Is that the face of an axe murderer? Do I really want to take off these sweats? And for those of you who get that far, what drink should I be casually sipping? I have the answer to that one. While your date sits awkwardly silent, stunned by your good looks, dazzled by your intellect, or wondering how to dispose of your body, the drink in your hand should be delicious, refreshing, crisp, clean, plant botanical vodka seltzer. Weighing in at only one carb, made with real fruit and botanicals traditionally used for stamina, immunity, and detox, Plant Botanical is already thinking about your future encounters. Follow and DM at Plant Loves You and share a story or video of your funniest, wildest, or most awkward date for a chance to win up to $1,000 for your next one. Plant Botanical, your perfect companion while you look for your perfect companion. Available at Target, Pavilions, Vons, Total Wine, or visit plantlovesyou.com 
to find a store near you. Plant Vodka and Vodka Seltzer. Just the good shit. Hey, Alex. It's Anna. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm great. I'm here with Christian Siriano. Hello. Hey, everybody. Will you tell us what's going on? Okay, so my romantic life is interesting, and it's made my work life kind of complicated. So I work as an architect in San Diego, and my, well, soon to be ex-wife and I, we were together for about 15 years, and then we basically, it's kind of the age-old story where She caught someone's eye at a bar and that someone happened to be a woman. And I kind of had my suspicions because all of a sudden this person kept calling a lot and they kept going out and hanging out a lot. So we were in Mexico City on this trip and we got a little drunk. And the next thing I know, my wife is kind of basically confessing to me that she has this connection to this 45-year-old lady, blah, blah, blah. And I've got to have, you know, I need to like pursue this. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. You mean like a woman that delivers the mail? And she's like, yes. I'm like, okay, like our mail, like the the post lady. So so we're sitting there in Mexico City and I'm just trying to think about what do I do here? It's been 15 years. Do I kind of like cut bait or do we try to make this thing work? And we basically made the decision to kind of try to make it work. So now it's kind of like one thing to have a a suspicion about the affair and then quite another to see the affair kind of take place right in front of you. So, you know, it really, the whole thing was like, okay, I don't know if I can do this. This is weird. I mean, I'm telling her, listen, I love you. I care about you. You love me. I don't own you. You don't own me. So let's, you pursue this. I'll move out. So I moved out. But the whoa, issue whoa, whoa, whoa. is, oh, oh. I, no, no, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt your story. Yeah. I love the way you're telling it. But was that devastating? Or were you like, you know what? This is actually, this feels kind of good. This feels right. That's an interesting question. One that I have struggled with my therapist to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was one of these things where it's like, you know, uh, I think I'm just going to try to laugh through this trauma. I've been trying to be as involved about it as I can be, you know, but initially, well, of course it's devastating and it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I thought you're my person and you're not my person and you, you know, Wait. yeah, I was kind of stuck in this, this, this place of like, uh, oh, well, what do I do here? You know, but do you miss her more than your pride is hurt? Do you know what I mean? Is your pride hurt more than you're actually longing for that particular companionship? Right. Well, there's a lot. That's a lot of years. Fifteen's a lot of years to be with somebody. And right, right. You know, okay. I'll be honest with you. If it was a guy, and I hate to say this, but if it was a guy, I would have been like, "Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, what's going on here?" But it was like I don't know, less threatening. Because it was a woman, For 45, sure. and a post woman. So I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Right. This is it, the thing you need, okay. Yeah, I, I think that there's a whole thing with the idea of, of masculinity and competitiveness. So that, that actually makes sense. Yeah. But that's what I wonder is that if you miss her true companionship or if the idea of your partner of that long leaving you is the more painful thing in terms of pride as opposed to actually missing her. Right. Well, it's hard to sort of divorce the two, (laughs) divorce (laughs) from one another, because of course there's always going to be that element of pride, I think. But for me, yeah, it was more that I was kind of like, whoa, I've been with this person for so long. And there were so many moments of like, you know, is this just attachment that's messing me up because I'm so used to this life, this, you know, with this person and now like that's changing. But of course I love her and I always, and I probably always will love her, you know, but of course there was the initial sting, but I think the overarching issue for me was just like, wow, this is like obviously something that she needs and this sucks for me. 
But if that's kind of her path and that's kind of where she wants to go, then she should be able to do that. I do think that we've been raised with, okay, this is what we do. We get married in our 20s and then, we, you know, we're supposed to be together and have kids or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it sounds to me like you may be entering into a fucking awesome period of your life. To me, it sounds like you miss the idea of what you guys had as opposed to her. But I don't know if I'm right about that at all. We've only been talking for, I don't know, 15 minutes or whatever. But are like, are you okay with the idea of moving on? Because I think about the idea of a public breakup or whatever makes me feel like a failure. Sure. But the idea of accomplishment through relationships, it's something that permeates throughout our society, which isn't exactly, you know, the right path for all of us. But what I hear in your voice forgive me if I'm completely incorrect, but that you don't necessarily miss her companionship. Am I right about that? Well, there's part of me that certainly does. I mean, she was my friend for so many years, but I will say, you know, when you go through a breakup like this, it does give you this opportunity to kind of take a step back and kind of see who you are and kind of see what your relationship has been like for a lot of years. And so it definitely gave me an opportunity to kind of look at it from afar and be like, you know what? There was a lot of this that was good, but there was a lot of this that really wasn't working. And maybe it was because she needed someone else. Maybe it was, you know, me being far too anxious about the relationship. But at the end, we kind of came to this realization that maybe we were not the perfect match or the match that we kind of hoped for. So we both kind of agreed about that in the end. But of course, there's going to be those residual feelings, you know? Right. Okay, so my, this is where this is the complicating factor. Here comes the question. I work with her brother. I work with her sister. They're both architects of my same firm. She works at the firm and her parents have no idea kind of what happened. I just assumed that they thought that I was stepping out or something. And then she kicked me out and et cetera, et cetera. And so there's two complicating factors here. Number one, I still work with all these people. And then the other side of it is like, you know, I do see her parents on occasion and dad gives me just the dirtiest look. <laughs> I mean, I had to cut bait, I guess, with her. Do I have to cut bait with, with the work thing too? Because it's super complicated. And then I've got my friends at the same time are like, you've got to have a sit down with your dad. You've got to like talk no, to them. No, They've got to know what's no, going on. <laughs> no, I don't know why that's my knee jerk reaction, but it just feels like, like you shouldn't have to ask the father to give you like a reprieve. It's not my place to out anybody or whatever. You know, I did think that was a, a, a weird kind of suggestion, but I, you know, and friends are being supportive. Can I ask you though, what would you like Let's say three years from now, where do you sort of see the goal, the end goal? The end goal, I honestly see myself in three years writing a musical about this terrible time in my life, Anna. Oh, fuck <laughs> I'm yes, call I it love the this. The Post Lady Blues. I will help you produce it. <laughs> the Post Lady is supposed to be bringing my boxes, not taking them away, Anna. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Um, I just want it to be normal. I just want it to be normal. And I just want to like, I want to be happy. I want her to be happy. But do you want to be in another relationship? I don't know. It might be slightly tricky to be working with your ex's family, but life is short. And so why not, I don't know, explore and not be trapped down by your ex's family. But if they provide great opportunity and you love them, then that's a whole other journey. Yeah, it's definitely not a situation where I think that she and I want to get back together. I don't think that's the situation. I would love it if you prioritized relationships and love over work. I know it's so fucking easy to say. I don't know if I have in the past at all. I just want you to be fucking happy. I don't want you to have the constraints of working at a place where people are a little fussy with you or you feel like if you date somebody else, then people are like being dramatic. <laughs> Is the idea of leaving your job, how devastating would that be for you? Like, is that actually a realistic option? That's a problem. I'm doing well at the job. You know, it's very comfortable. I make a decent wage. It's already like a money investment and then a time investment. And it's kind of like, oh man, can you walk away to start all over again? Yes, but um, here's what I think. That's a lot. I feel like you just gave us the answer. I really do. I think that you need something more. And I don't mean to be too presumptuous, but I think even by calling us that you are looking for 
an answer out. And I think that you should find it. Does that make any sense? Oh, I was afraid you were going to tell me that. I'm sorry. But it just feels like that's the answer that you needed. You've got, you, like, the whole life, everything ahead of you. So why torture yourself being with this family and being judged or whatever is going on? I don't know. There are days where I just say, you know what? What if I just got on a plane mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. moved to Egypt? Exactly. Okay, and I'm in Egypt now riding a camel. So how often do those days come? <laughs> <laughs> Only every day. No. You see, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I think you figure out what your moving on plan is. I really do. I really do. I've been toying with this idea of just quitting and becoming a professional wrestler. I'm not even kidding. Oh my god. I That's have a been... great fucking idea. <laughs> I have some friends that like literally the dads that are separated and this is what they do every Sunday. They train on Mondays and they do wrestling on Sundays. And I'm like, that's it. Yes. That's the riddle. They've totally. solved the riddle. <laughs> I haven't taken too many risks in my life, but moving down here to Los Angeles and attempting to act, that's a whole other journey. But I'm proud, and the same thing here with Christian. Like, everybody that we have here on the podcast has taken a crazy risk in their life that, you know, pays off because there's a belief in oneself. Even if it fails, even if it crashes and burns, but at least there is that attempt. Right, Christian? Yeah. You're just silent sure. now. It's an intense story. Christian's silent right now, I think, because... This is tapping into something that he knows. Am I right? Yeah. No, I think everybody has this a little bit in their, their own way. But even if you can't fully quit, it may be nice to separate for a little bit in some way. Oh, so you're saying he shouldn't quit? I'm just saying if he physically, financially, and like, don't ruin your whole life because someone else did that to you. I don't know if that's always the best You're thing. cautionary. Yes. But I think it would be good to escape a little bit in some way. I think so. For sure. Right? Agree. I think it'd be amazing if everyone was super close and super tight. But having said that, I don't think you should doubt yourself and be cautionary in terms of like, okay, I must hang in with this law firm or whatever because I don't know where I'll go because there's a lot of places. So just, One life to live, That's for right, sure. so just gotta sure. live it. <laughs> hey, Alex, <laughs> thank you so much. I absolutely enjoyed this. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Bye, Alex. Are you, do you that feel was a, a little traumatized? One. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are, do you feel a little traumatized? Are you okay? I really do. I know, I'm so sorry. I, no, I your job is you. hard. This is a Thank hard you. job. It's like very intense. That's it why is. I just sat there and listened because I'm like, what do you really say? It's yeah. It's quite a challenge. Yeah, right. and I don't But do I made it through. That was a long one. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. But I can't. Thank you. Hey, dear listeners, this will be the last episode of Unqualified for 2019. Wishing you a happy new year and a happy 2020. We will be back in January. And if anyone wants to send us holiday cards, which I would just love, our address is unqualified. P.O. Box 528-15332 Antioch Street, spelled a-N-T-I-O-C-H, Pacific Palisades, California, 90272. Thank you, everyone. I love you.